Looking into the haze of Venus, experts have found traces of phosphine, a possible indicator of life. No one kept secrets like the Soviet Union. During the late 1960s, the Soviet Union did its best to explore Venus amidst its thick clouds and deadly pressure. However, not one drop of knowledge about what they learned about Earth's sister planet was shared with anyone. Now, 62 years after the Soviet Union was dissolved, some of the secret photos from their discoveries in Venus are seeping through the cracks, and experts are panicking. What exactly do these photos contain that brings a cause for alarm? Also, what else did the Soviets learn from the Venus missions that they've kept secret all this while, aliens? Join us in this video as we explore why experts are panicking over declassified photos from Venus by the Soviet Union. It was like a new Cold War had begun all over again, only this time, the battlefield was outer space. The US and the Soviet Union were determined to outshine the others. The Soviets struck the first blow when they launched Sputnik in October 1957. It was the first artificial satellite ever. A couple of blows followed when the Soviet Union achieved feats like making the first animal enter Earth's orbit. The Soviets also boast the first rocket ignition in the Earth's orbit, the first man-made object to land on the moon, and the first woman to enter outer space. The U.S. didn't waste any time responding by creating its own agency, NASA. Soon, they made a comeback by making the first American to orbit Earth and the first man ever to walk on the moon. The Apollo 11 mission was a big win. Thereafter, NASA kept pushing for more missions and more technological prowess so they could outshine their rival, the Soviets. In the heat of the space rivalry, the Soviet Union stepped things up a bit, turning their attention to Earth's sister planet, Venus. At that time, scientists worldwide knew little about Venus, besides that it had a similar size to Earth and possessed a treacherous atmosphere. There were so many mysteries surrounding this planet, and the Soviets made up their mind to be the ones to solve these mysteries. And so, the Venera mission was born. Venera was dedicated to learning all there is to know about Venus. But this mission was never going to be an easy one. You see, landing a human on Venus is practically impossible due to the soul-crushing pressures on the planet and the terrible gases like sulfur in the atmosphere. And so, the Soviets decided to deploy a space object to the terrifying planet instead. If this worked out, it would be a major win for the Soviets, since no other nation had dared such a feat. Soon, the Soviet space program started mapping out plans, and in a couple of months, the Venera one was created. The Soviets launched it in 1961, but it never made it to Venus. Rather, Venera 1 missed Venus by 62,000 miles. The Soviets also lost communication with the probe. This prompted the Soviets to create and launch Venera 2 four years later. Venera 2 was launched on November 12, 1965. However, just like Venera 1, it only managed to fly past Venus. The probe had everything it needed to record and store data. Still, USSR scientists could learn anything from this mission because it went radio silent as soon as it approached Venus. On March 4, 1996, Venera 2 was officially declared missing. Investigations later revealed that it had overheated and suffered some technical malfunctions. These first two failures of the Venera mission prompted the USSR to develop more advanced tech for their next Venera probes. Venera 3 was launched on November 16, 1965, with Venera 4 following much later on June 12, 1967. While Venera 3 crashed into Venus due to the extreme heat, Venera 4 landed on Venus intact. As soon as it landed, the various instruments on this spacecraft started recording and transmitting data. All these were pre-installed and tested before launch to ensure the mission's success. The Soviets did everything to ensure Venera 4 could withstand the chaotic atmospheric pressure and temperature on Venus. One of the outstanding things scientists learned from Venera 4 was that Venus had no magnetic field like Earth, 
and its atmosphere was also heavily loaded with 90 to 95 carbon-4 oxide. This discovery made Venus seem more like an anti-Earth. You see, our Earth's magnetic field is one thing that makes life possible. It protects us from harmful solar radiation. The fact that Venus lacked this feature meant it wasn't a substitute for Earth. And then, there's the high level of CO2. Humans need oxygen to survive, not CO2. This greenhouse gas is why our ozone layer is dying. Yet Venus has surplus amounts of it. All the data from Venera 4 was profound, but there was one secret that the USSR had kept from the whole world. Venera 4 never landed, as the Soviet space program made us believe. Shocking. Venera 4 consisted of a main bus, a landing probe, and several advanced instruments encased in a pressure vessel. It was powered by solar energy, with a pair of solar panel wings measuring about 4 meters in wingspan. One of the ends of the solar panel had an antenna mounted on it. The spacecraft used some small thrusters for altitude control, but there was a large rocket for mid-course maneuvering. For protection, the spacecraft possessed a heat shield and a radar. Communications were achieved with the help of two 922 MHZ radio transmitters. Aside from these, Venera 4 also possessed a barometer, magnetometer, altimeter, density gauge, gas analyzers, cosmic ray detectors, two thermometers, and charged particle traps. You see, the heat of the space race at that time was so much that neither the United States nor the USSR wanted to concede failure of any sort. And so, even though the Venera 3 had won the record for the first man-made object to impact, or crash, on the surface of another planet, the Russians wanted more. And so they lied a little about the Venera 4 mission. You see, the complexity of Venus' atmosphere made it hard for Soviet scientists to tell whether Venera 4 had touched down or not. As it when it began transmitting data, it was calculated to be about 16 miles above ground. However, later on, the scientists discovered that it was actually 30 miles above ground when it started sending data. Further investigations proved that it never made it to the ground intact. However, the USSR never revealed this side of the story until much later, when Venera 7 made a clear, uncontroversial, soft landing on Venus. Venera 7 was the true work of art by the Soviet space program. The spacecraft set the pace for all others. Before Venera 7, the USSR had launched two missions, Venera 5 and 6, in 1969. The space probes from these missions returned some valuable data, but they never landed on Venus. Venera 7 officially landed on Venus on December 15, 1970. In case you're wondering how this spacecraft managed to succeed where others failed, it all boils down to its advanced technology. Venera 7 was built to withstand pressures up to 18 megapascals and temperatures of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The actual temperature on Venus is below this value, but Soviet engineers didn't want to take any chances. As in earlier models, the space vessel also featured many scientific measuring instruments like accelerometers, sensors, and radar. One thing that aided Venera 7's soft landing was the parachute. The parachute opened about 60 kilometers from the surface, and atmospheric testing began almost immediately. At one point, the parachute failed, causing a seemingly fast descent. Venera 7 lander struck the surface of Venus at a speed of about 37 meters per hour. This was quite a soft landing compared to what was experienced in earlier models. Venera 7 had no trouble surviving the impact thanks to its tough build and sophisticated tech. After touchdown, the probe continued transmitting data back to Earth for the next 53 minutes. It was Venera 7 that informed scientists that the actual temperature on Venus is about 900 degrees Fahrenheit, with a pressure of 9 megapascals. Venera 8 was a step up from Venera 7. The space probe was launched in 1972, and it was equipped with similar instruments as its predecessors. After the 118-day journey from Earth to Venus, Venera 8 capsule entered the chaotic Venus atmosphere. This time, the Soviet space program upgraded the landing systems beyond the regular parachute so Venera 8 could break in the air. This helped reduce the landing speed and allowed this spacecraft to land very softly. However, like Venera 7, 
Venera 8 could only withstand the harsh Venus climate for about 50 minutes. That was the amount of time scientists were able to collect any data from this spacecraft. Luckily, scientists were able to get data on the lighting conditions on Venus. This was important, as it would determine whether or not it would be possible to take photos on Venus. Data from this space probe also showed that the clouds on Venus were at a higher altitude than researchers had previously thought. Venera 8 also sent back data regarding the composition of Venus soil. The concentration of elements like uranium, thorium, and potassium were all measured, as well as some other elements found on our earthen soil. The Venera 7 and 8 missions were the real game-changers for Soviet space exploration. It's quite fascinating that these man-made devices not only made it through Venus's horrific clouds and heat, but also touched down successfully, and even analyzed the treacherous planet before giving in. Remember that all of this happened back in the 70s. The technology available back then is nothing compared to what we have now. The Soviet Union was truly a formidable rival to the U.S. in the space race. But the Soviets weren't satisfied with these achievements. They set their eyes on getting a glimpse of Venus to find out what it actually looked like. And so, Venera 9 to 12 missions focused on getting a picture of the hot, rocky planet. Armed with cameras, the Venera 9 to 12 missions explored Venus, taking a few pictures here and there. These images weren't much to go by, but they revealed the harsh, treacherous landscape Venus had been hiding from astronomers all this while. Scientists saw rocky landscape, impact craters, and vast plains filled with ancient lava. No sign of water anywhere on Venus, not even a drop. These revelations were shocking, as they showed that Venus didn't just possess a horrible atmosphere, its surface was also treacherous. All of this points to one fact. Our sister planet is nothing like our home, Earth. Life on Venus would be practically impossible. The USSR, realizing this, decided to dig further. Missions 13 to 14 didn't just take pictures, but also observed other properties like wind speed. Venera 13 and 14 probes were launched in 1981 and featured more sophisticated tech than their predecessors. The final pieces of the puzzle were the Venera 15 and 16 missions, launched on June 2nd and 7, 1983, respectively. These probes weighed about 9,000 pounds each. By this time, Soviet scientists had learned so much about Venus's climate and surface that landing was no longer a priority. Therefore, Venera 15 and 16 were designed to orbit Venus rather than touch down on the planet. Thanks to the sophisticated technology available by this time, these space probes could pretty much do everything their predecessors did more accurately without landing. The Venera 15 and 16 probes were equipped with special radar-based imaging apparatus that could take clear images and even map out the entire surface of Venus. There were no lakes, no rivers, and no oceans on this planet. Most of all, there were no signs of life. However, although the Venera missions didn't reveal any aliens, they did reveal something quite disturbing. During the Venera 13 exploration, the space probe captured the sound of the wind on Venus, and it was not what you'd expect. It sounded eerie. The sound recorded by this probe just makes you wonder if it really came from the blowing wind or another source entirely. Perhaps an invisible alien on Venus? There's no way to tell. Venera 13 did quite well for the Soviet space program, as it outperformed all other probes. Initially, it was predicted to last 45 minutes, but it lasted over 120 minutes. During this time, it captured interesting color images of Venus and sent back recordings of the wind and data regarding the soil composition of this lifeless planet. But there was something Venera 13 or any of its sibling probes failed to pick up. It was the presence of one element that would have proved the existence of life on Venus, phosphine. You see, phosphine is one gas that is associated with biology, it is simply a phosphorus atom bound with three hydrogen atoms. This same gas is abundant on Earth and has also been detected on planets like Jupiter and Saturn. Here on Earth, this gas is formed when organic matter decays. However, the entire thing becomes a mystery when considering a rocky, harsh planet with no signs of life. How did phosphine find its way into Venus's atmosphere? 
In case you're wondering how the presence of phosphine on Venus came to light, it's all thanks to a group of scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. At first, this discovery sparked a lot of controversy, as it hinted at the possibility of biological life forms on Venus. Maybe aliens had invaded the planet after the Soviets' exploration, or perhaps they've been there all along. No one knows for sure. However, not long after the announcement of phosphine's presence on Venus went public, NASA came to debunk the claim. Using the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, SOFIA, NASA insisted that the research was false and there was no phosphine on Venus. SOFIA is a telescope that shows spectral data. The data from this telescope indicated that phosphine was only present in tiny amounts, almost non-existent. The agency mounted the telescope on an airplane and observed the skies of Venus from our sky here on Earth for a closer, better analysis. At this altitude, the instrument had greater sensitivity to phosphine. The researchers concluded that if phosphine was present at all, it was only present in about 0.8 parts per billion. But you see, although their study was convincing, it lacked an alibi. Unfortunately, another evidence connected to NASA itself supports the claim of phosphine on Venus, and this one dates back to the 1990s. It was NASA's Pioneer Venus Multiprobe mission, which took place in December 1978. The mission involved releasing four space probes into Venus's atmosphere, with one carrying an instrument. In a recent reinvestigation into the data from this mission, one expert named Rakesh Mogul from California State University has testified to detecting the presence of phosphine. According to him, scientists must have overlooked this gas since they were more focused on learning about the features and topography of Venus. Adding to this, Another recent discovery of phosphine was announced to the public at the National Astronomy Meeting in 2023. The discovery came from a scientist named Jane Greaves. Using the James Clark Maxwell Telescope, Jane and her team detected higher levels of phosphine on Venus than was earlier noticed. The James Clark Maxwell Telescope, JCMT, is located at Mauna Kea Observatory, Hawaii. It is a sub-millimeter wavelength radio telescope. The amazing device has a primary mirror that measures 15 meters across and possesses both spectral line and continuum receivers. The spectral line receivers are what scientists use to identify molecules in clouds of other planets, as well as study their chemistry and velocity. Scientists use this telescope to study the solar system, interstellar gas particles, and nearby galaxies. Jane and her team had observed Venus with this telescope for over a year before publicizing their reports and results. They found phosphine deep in the clouds of Venus, which is quite suspicious and mysterious at the same time. The team believes this is a credible sign that some form of bio-life exists on Venus. However, they admitted that there's still a possibility that something else is responsible for the phosphine witnessed here. So the question remains, is there life on Venus? And did the Soviet space program find such life forms and keep them secret. It's no longer news that top government agencies have secrets, a series of files and information that they consider too delicate for the public. Such files are termed classified. They never get out unless some whistleblower leaks them or they become officially unclassified. We've seen this happen several times with NASA, where some otherwise hidden information or documentaries got leaked to the public, causing panic and controversies. Could it be that the Soviets had classified files of their own on the Venera missions? During the Venera 13 mission, analysis of soil samples showed traces of organic molecules. Tying this to the recently discovered phosphine molecule in the atmosphere, you just can't help but wonder if there are truly aliens on Venus. Interestingly, some captivating declassified photographs from the Soviets have just been released, and if anything, these photos may hold the key to solving our Venus bioexistence mystery. The declassified photos show the planet's widespread volcanic activity and other features like lava flows, craters, polished rocks, and channels cut into the ground. The rocks in these photos seem to have undergone erosion, and the channels noticed on the ground seem very much like the work of water erosion. This has made some scientists wonder if water was once present on the surface of this planet. Experts like Michio Kaku 
have burst into the scene to reveal how some of the rocks in these photos are quite similar to those found on Earth and Mars. This further hints that our two neighboring planets may have originated from the same parent or the same place in evolution. The declassified photos revealed some other features like certain dark areas on the surface that are quite mysterious. These things may be evidence of biological action, and experts are keenly investigating them. There's no telling where the investigations will lead from here, but attention isn't so much on this planet anymore. The Soviets have learned all they needed to learn about Venus. Plus, they've earned quite a reputation for their remarkable exploits on the treacherous planet. Carrying out further investigations is pretty much a waste of time and resources for the Soviet space program. However, if humanity can send humans to set foot on the planet Venus, we may finally be able to conclude if biological life forms exist there. We'll also get to know if there's any way to salvage this planet and make it an alternate Earth. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.